In this video, we will cover the basics of RTI Builder and run through a highlight based PTM fitter process. We're going to start by setting up the project files in the C drive. It must be in the C drive, otherwise, there will be issues during processing. It's worth noticing that this software has not been updated in a long time, and there are a number of issues that are related to very old ways of working with computers. An example of this is that folder names must not have spaces in them, as this will cause the process to fail. To create the folders, we're going to right click and go to new, new folder, name it something sensible. And then inside that folder, we're going to create two new folders, which must be called the following. JPEG exports and originals. If it's not, if there isn't one called JPEG exports, it won't be able to find the photographs and import them. So now we're going to bring in the photographs from our project, copy them, and then paste them into originals, and also JPEG exports. RTI Builder can only work with lowercase JPEG files. In this case, they are uppercase JPEG files, so the software will fail in the last step. To make sure this doesn't happen, check what the extension is, and then you can change it very quickly by going to CMD or Command Prompt, type in CD space, and then drag the file down onto it. Press Enter. Now you can use a little bit of code to uh, change the file extension. So ren or rename star.jpg uppercase star.jpg. This is changing the extension at the end from uppercase to lowercase. Press enter to run it. It should take a second. And then in the files, press F5 and you'll see they're now lowercase jpeg. To do this on a Mac, select the files, go to the tools, and then rename, uh, replace text with the file extensions as appropriate. So we're now going to start working in RTI Builder. So firstly, we're going to open it up. And we're presenting with a list of different project types. The one that we use most is PTM Fitter as this is the one that fits our purposes most. There are the LP tracks, these four below, are largely obsolete. They refer to project types that are from pre-2010 versions of RTI Builder, so we don't use them. You can also use the HSH, fit, HSH fitter, but we have uh, determined that it's a little bit more grainy, the results, and there are less features than with the PTM, so we tend to use the PTM fitter only. If you want to use the HSH fitter, note that it is exactly the same process as the PTM workflow. So to start your project, you put a name in at the top, like that, and then you say start new project. On this page, you will add the photographs to your project. To do this, press open folder, and then in the option box that comes up, navigate to your files, uh, C drive, and the project name that we selected. You should pick the root folder, so the outside folder, rather than the project inside it, as it wants to find the entire folder. If you select the wrong, pro the wrong folder, it will tell you that it doesn't contain a JPEG exports folder and will fail. So press open, and it will bring in the photos usually takes a couple of minutes. Once your folder has been opened, you'll see all of the photos in the software. If you've not already checked them, do so now and make sure that there are no photos with large shadows on them. If there are, remove them using the remove picture button. So you'd press one and then you'd press the remove picture button. At this point, it should be mentioned that if the software does not work as you expect at any step or an option is grayed out, for example, the next button at the bottom, where you are not expecting it to be, it's always worth restarting the software. So I'm going to click next, 
and this takes me to the Detect Spheres page. In this step, you'll be selecting the area that the sphere is found so the software knows how to process the highlights. In the top left hand corner, you'll see your photograph. You're going to see your sphere, wherever it is in the photograph, and you're just going to drag and draw a cube around it. Then you're going to click add area down here. And because we've used a red ball, I'm going to change this to red. You have the option to have multiple spheres in your photographs, but be aware that the software can only use one. At the bottom of the page, you'll see options for binarize before half and use half transform. The half transform relates to the accuracy of the detection of the sphere. There is very little information about how this works, but the standard practice seems to be to leave the first box unticked and the second box ticked. If you have issues with sphere detection, try turning on the second box. To continue, we're going to click detect spheres and the software will process for a minute. When the processing is finished, you'll be presented with a green blue image of something that looks like a sphere. This is a representation of the ball as the software sees it. It may, depending on your lens and where you place the ball, be a little bit distorted. This is largely okay. If it's too distorted, you may need to retake your photographs. The red indicator is often not in the correct position or the correct size, so you'll need to adjust it. To do this, you drag in the center to move it, and then on the outside, you grab the little uh, gizmo there, and then you adjust it accordingly. There's a little bit of distortion here, but this is okay. The image scale at the bottom zooms in and out on the photograph. Once you've finished adjusting the gizmo on this area, you'll press set new sphere to keep the settings. Then click next. In this step, you will tell the software to detect highlights. I've never yet had an RTI where the highlights were not detected with the default settings. There is also no information about what the settings do. So it's best to just click highlight detection and hope for the best. This is the slowest part of the processing. On the next page, you will see a very small red cross where the highlights are determined to have been on the photographs. Check through a few of the photographs to make sure that they are placed sensibly. So here we see it's correctly placed. Again, correctly placed. You will also see a spherical representation of the ball and the lights at the bottom of the page. So scroll down and you'll see this here. If any of the highlights are in the wrong place on a photograph, you can drag and drop the little red cross to where you want it to be and click redefine highlight. Once you're satisfied, press next. In this final section of RTI Builder, you will create the final PTM. The first step is to locate the PTM fitter that we installed earlier. Click find and then navigate to where you installed the PTM fitter. So in our case, it was RTI Builder V 2.02, plugins, PTM fitter, PTM fitter.exe, and then click open. If you want to crop the RTI, you can select crop, use crop, and then draw out a rectangle over where you want the crop to be. To get rid of it, press clip, clear crop. You can also use free, but it's a bit tricky to do. So you want to double click and then click and then click, click and then double click at the end. It doesn't always work as well as that. So be aware, you may have to do it a couple of times. It's beneficial to crop the result as it takes away the distracting elements from the edges and makes the result look much nicer and professional. You can resize your file, but there is little benefit to it, so don't do it. You can choose between LRGB and RGB. RGB has larger file sizes, but better colors. 
Since most of the time you won't use colors in PTM, it's not a problem to use LRGB. If you use two spheres in your setup, you can choose which sphere to use in the final fitting using this toggle here. To run the process, press execute. Once the processing is finished, you'll see a message that says fitting complete. Press OK. You will now see a bunch of new folders have appeared. These are the, the processing files that are created during this process. The one we're interested in is in finished files and is the PTM file. In this video, we have covered how to prepare photos and folders for RTI Builder, the project types within RTI Builder, adding photos to projects, detecting spheres, detecting highlights, and PTM fitting.